returned glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard just as it had been told them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from Jesus the Christ, who is our light, our Lord, and the peace of the whole world. No exceptions. Tonight is holy, of course, and joyful. In spite of whatever happens at any time in the world, this news is the most incredible news that has ever been given to humanity. And there's so much going on in this incarnation of God coming into the world in a risky way, in a vulnerable way, and who grow up to do all these things that are on this tree. It's magnificent. If you haven't looked at it yet, you may, if the sermon gets long, just look at all of these chrismans, and you have all of what Jesus did. It's not going to be long tonight. But it's amazing to, to look at this. They teach you through the eye gate this incredible news of God becoming one of us. So, take it into your heart. The whole thing, the carols, some you know, some you don't, that's okay. The lessons, the communion where the presence of Christ is promised to come inside of you as you receive it. Take it all in. And may I make a suggestion Take this bulletin home for the 12 days of Christmas and reread it every day. If you haven't started devotional life, there you go. It's very simple. It's already in your hands, and you will be surprised at what the repetition of this marvelous story, which is so rich, will do for your spiritual life. Um, now, recognize that in this story, peace Joy and courage were given to the holy couple, Mary and Joseph. Um, because it wasn't peaceful at the time this happened. In fact, it's much like the time we live in now. Jesus was born in a time that's like ours. A time where both good and evil live together, right you don't even need to go to social media to know that, although it's all over there. You know it in your families, if you're honest, in your neighborhood, with that cranky uncle, that neighbor you wish you liked more, let's put it that way. Good and evil, uh, at this point in life, they live side by side. Uh, last night, I posted on my Facebook post, you can go see it, the actual Christmas Eve service in Bethlehem, Palestine. Not Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Bethlehem, Palestine. I worshiped with them 10 years ago. It was one of the most powerful services I've ever experienced. And I, I could recognize some of the people that were still there. Marvelous people. Can you imagine what they are going through right now? You will see that and hear that in the, in the message the very courageous message of Pastor Isaac, who's pastor of Christmas Lutheran Church there in Bethlehem. Um, no, we live in a world where at one moment a magnificent act of kindness can happen, and at the next there can be genocide halfway across the world um, in Israel, in Palestine, in the West Bank, in Gaza, where the genocide figure now is 9,000 children, just in Gaza. Uh, it's enough to make you go into despair. But wait, there's more to the story. That's why we're here. In spite of all that, it is a joyful night and always has been for Christians throughout the years. Jesus was born in a time like ours where tonight in Tacoma, in Gig Harbor, in Seattle, some homeless woman is going to give her fresh hot cup of coffee to another homeless woman who needs it more than her just because she wants to, because the love of Christ lives in her. But just a few blocks away, a man with his family gathered in their very fine little fireside room will badmouth all the homeless on Christmas Eve in front of his kids. Good and evil they exist together. They did when Jesus was born, 
and they do now. And by the way, if you do go to that sermon, be ready for a very courageous sermon and a very joyful sermon at the end. It's both and. It's what our mixed world is like, see. Well, Christmas is about God wanting to give all of us another chance at life, at love, at being all that we were intended to be through Christ. That's the, our second chance, our third chance, our tenth chance. I think I'm on my 3,000th chance or more. That's what Christmas was the beginning of. God saying, things are so screwed up, I'm going to come myself in person and not only show and teach, but be the love of God that rubs off on all of you. And I particularly like Mary and Joseph in this story. Um, you know, sometimes we, as I've gotten older, I've wondered about this phrase, Mary, meek and mild. <laughs> I mean, I love the tone, I love the hymn, don't get me wrong, but we can be critical at times of some of the words, meek and mild. This is a woman who agreed to bear a child under very suspicious circumstances. She wasn't married yet. A child that was not Joseph's or hers. And in that society, as you've heard me say many times, shame and honor was the number one game, and she had to bear that shame. Meek and mild. She sang a song of liberation. Yes. She called out the rich who oppressed the poor in an empire where you could get killed for that. Meek and mild? I think not. She made a rough trip to Bethlehem, heavy with pregnancy. And then another trip, a little later, we'll hear it on Epiphany, with Joseph and the little Jesus, where? To Egypt as a refugee. I think Mary was a revolutionary. Given that courage and that peace in her heart and in her life, through God, through the angels, through the announcements, through the Spirit. And what about Joseph? Didn't the Spirit give him courage to become a surrogate father for a boy he did not sire? Yes. The story is magnificent and earthy. Or as one of my uh, pastor friends back in New York said after watching Christmas Lutheran Christmas Eve service in Palestine, Bethlehem, he said, the incarnation was really raw and bloody and contentious, and that's where God meets us. Wherever we are in the journey of life, God will meet us. In a few minutes, that light Jesus Christ is going to be held symbolically by us and we're all looking forward to it because it's a marvelous time to hold a candle and sing Silent Night, is it not? But I just want you to think about something. You're going to be given a candle to hold, to bear the light of Christ, which is exactly your vocation from God through Christ. Only not just symbolically, but with your very life with your actions, your attitudes, and we never get it perfect. You heard me say that. Don't worry about it. But while you're holding that and singing and maybe crying, because that's what that song sometimes does, I would like to invite you to think about what you're doing holding that light symbolically and what you'll do for the rest of your life in real time, in the real world, for all kinds of people. Because that's what you're called to do. So as you drive home tonight, after this singing of Silent Night and this heart-warming experience, not ignorantly, we know that there's hurt in the world that needs help. But while you're driving, notice all the lights in town, in Gig Harbor. If you're going back to Tacoma, Seattle, you'll see even more lights. They're all out there. Yes. Frosty will be out there, a big blob of white, smiling with a corncob pipe. That's okay. He's, he's lit. And Santa will be lit. And all kinds of trees will be lit. Storefronts will have their lights lit. But in every maybe two or three block area, there'll be another lit. Jesus and Mary and Joseph. Sometimes they're big ones. I like that. They're in the yard too. 
But you don't have to force yourself to say, I can't enjoy Frosty or Rudolph's nose that's lit up either. That's all right. Here's what you can do, what Christians have always done. Take what's ever in culture, whatever the cultural norms are at that time, and think of how they point to God, to Christ, to unconditional love. You can even think of Frosty as doing that. That's all right. It's better to see the Holy Family, but take in all the lights. It's fun. And what's more than fun is the story of Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. Our Savior, the light of the world, is joyful because it gives us hope in the midst of wherever we are on the journey of life and faith. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow has not yet come. Live out the light tonight. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.